It's that time. First Take. Good morning, everybody. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend. Welcome into another week here on First Take. What's up? What's Max up? Max Kellerman, How Stephen A., Molly Karam. How up, we big doing? boy? Welcome back. Thank Great you. job yes. Saturday night calling that fight. Appreciate yes. it. I watched. Yeah. I watched. Hey, you. Okay. Really? I watched. Did you guys have fun on the road last week, too? I did. Yeah, right until I got uh, sick. It was great. Oh, gosh. <laughs> we, we need to get this Germs man some vitamins, airplanes. some tea, some drinks. Hey, right. I got to do one quick thing before we start. Um, happy bladed birthday. I didn't oh. know last week. You didn't tell us. Yeah, so, I didn't know. And much. I felt terrible. Happy bladed birthday to Max. Also, happy birthday to our producer, Brian Bork. And it's okay. also his mom, Karen, and his fiance, Katie's birthday as well. So oh, Greeny and I have the same birthday. Oh, it was Greeny's birthday, too. Stop, birthday hold on, hold on. Stop the press. What? Brian, our Brian Bork got a fiance? Yes. It's her birthday <laughs> and his mom's birthday. How crazy is that? And well, she happy is lovely. Well, happy birthday to Mama Borg. Happy birthday <laughs> to Mama Borg. But Brian Borg got a for yes. your fiance. Yes, she's lovely. My yes. brother, I yes. didn't know you had it in you. <laughs> I did not know. Congratulations. And happy birthday I didn't know to that. Too. I didn't know that. But okay, Max, okay. I don't know if you got to celebrate it all. I know it's been a crazy few days for you, but happy birthday. Thank you very much, Molly. All right, so coming up, A-Rod, he's calling it quits. So does the controversial star belong in the Hall of Fame? Don't miss that discussion in just a bit. But we start with the NFL and that debacle. We almost had football. It was a disappointing night for NFL fans who hoped to see the Packers and Colts line up in the Hall of Fame game in Canton, Ohio. Instead, the game was canceled earlier Sunday due to unsafe field conditions. So both teams expressed their concerns about player safety as crews worked on the area around the midfield logo. So the issue actually stemmed from the paint used on the logo and in the end zones. Stephen A. This was crazy. Is this a big deal or no big deal? Well, it's a big deal in this respect. Um, you got paying customers out there, and it's not like a typical game where, you know, the game is local, and you're going to see your local team, who you support, et cetera, et cetera. This is the Hall of Fame. It's in Canton, Ohio. You got people coming from all parts of the country descending upon Canton, Ohio for this weekend's festivities. Obviously, guys getting inducted into the Hall of Fame and then, you know, uh, culminated with the Hall of Fame game. Uh, you've, we understand why the game was canceled. We get that. Player safety obviously is paramount. And when you see paint congealing on midfield, at the midfield and in the end zone, you understand why they made the decision that they made. But it's a big deal because how can this level of ineptitude sift through in inside the NFL? You are a multi-billion dollar establishment. Now, there are people that are going to say, hey, well, the Hall of Fame is separate than the NFL itself. And David Baker, the president of the Hall of Fame, a massive, massive dude, by the way. You might talk, uh, you might talk about him today, but it's going to be from a distance. You ain't going to say anything <laughs> to his face. I can tell you that much. But it's one of those situations where even though it's separate and apart in terms of its operating procedures from the NFL, the buck stops with the NFL. It's the Hall of Fame game. It's the National Football League. It's National Football. Football League Hall of Famers that were scheduled to be in attendance that were going to be honored, obviously, not just Saturday night, not just Friday night before that, but the Sunday festivities and what have you. To allow this mistake to take place is, is just a, a sincere lack of judgment. It's, it's egregious in terms of its ineptitude. And, you know, I agree with my man Randy Moss, who did an exceptional job uh, debuting here with ESPN yesterday. He called it just like it should be called. Somebody needs to be fired for something like this. I mean, and, and, don't, and don't come to me talking about it's enough that you're giving people their money back. Well, are you giving them money back for their hotels? What about gas money for people that drove there? Yeah. You know, it, there's a lot of expenditures that took place. It isn't just about who walked through the turnstiles. It's the trip that they made there. It's, it's months of planning. It's so many things that go into it for the paying customer. And the NFL, who prides itself more so on making money than they do anything else because they're exceptional at doing so, is supposed to be about the business of ensuring that we all get exposed to an exceptional product. And if it's not exceptional, let it be because the players out on the field and the coaches out on the field aren't performing their due diligence because they're going up against opposition that are going to do everything they can to derail them. Not, don't let it be because of something administrative. Don't let it be because of, of folks working out on the field. Don't let it be because of monotonous, mundane stuff that you automatically are supposed to know you're supposed to take care of. The fact that the National Football League, and I'm putting it on them, 
can allow this to happen is as bad as it gets. It shows whether it be a dereliction of duty, a flagrant level of ineptitude, whatever you want to call it. This falls at the doorstep of the National Football League because the buck stops with them. There would be no Hall of Fame game were it not for the National Football League. And since your name, your cachet, that three-letter brand is attached to it, how could you allow this to happen? Inexcusable. I can't believe this. You're starting in with me right away on a Monday. First thing on he a Monday, you're starting good. in with me with sure. this. This is no big deal, Stephen A. Eh? It's no big deal. Look, really? there is, uh, sure, you're right. For the thousands of paying customers, it's a big deal. Mm -hmm. But it's being broadcast to millions, not thousands. So for the vast majority of people who are, for some reason, kind of mildly interested in this game, which is beyond me, it's no big deal. Football, first of all, and, and by the way, if you bought tickets and plane and, and hotel and all that, you're right, it's a major inconvenience. And I don't want to say you're paying a stupid tax. It's not fair to people who are interested in the game, but... Football doesn't lend itself to exhibition. It's the, when was the last time you watched the Pro Bowl? I haven't watched the Pro Bowl in years. It's terrible because you can't play football at one-third speed without really tackling and all those things. It's not really football. That's the first thing. And this is an exhibition game. And not only that, it's an extra exhibition game. You don't need that fifth game if you're these two teams. And it's only there because the NFL is really here piggybacking, piggybacking the fact that there is a Hall of Fame induction ceremony, so you can use that to pump up one extra exhibition game for which the teams get paid, the networks make money, and the players make very, very, very little compared to what they actually make. The, the, I mean, I, the interest in this game escapes me entirely, but the blame on Goodell here I think is also misplaced. It's the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You are absolutely right when you say Look, it's the NFL that's really the engine here because the NFL is synonymous with professional football. That is true. In the spirit of it, it's true. But the actual Hall of Fame is the pro football Hall of Fame, and therefore, Goodell doesn't really have complete oversight the way he does in the NFL. Would you be interested to know, and it may surprise some, how many uh, field-related cancellations have there been due to field conditions since Goodell has been commissioner of the NFL? Zero. Haven't been any. This, if anything, kind of makes Goodell look kind of good because look what happens when I'm not in charge. Events get canceled. I think, it, it, well, if anything, it makes him look kind of good. I don't think it's that big a deal. Well, 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 first of all, I mean, as I've gotten to know you throughout the years, but specifically over the last two weeks, uh -oh. why am I not surprised that you would take this position? I mean, far be it for the viewing audience to matter. I mean, according to Matt Kellerman, I mean, yeah, you understand why the people that paid the hard-earned money and walked through the turnstiles and drove there and paid Plans hotel fees. Year in I mean, that's a uh, year, year in advance. Yeah, we understand a, a scintilla of sensitivity that goes in their direction, but the viewing customer who was looking forward to watching it on television, they got no games, okay? Uh, a seven-year-old nephew of mine that sat up there, or actually a friend, a, 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 the seven-year-old nephew of a friend of mine that was looking forward to watching the game yesterday and was like, oh, yeah, the seven, he's disappointed because he was looking forward. No, that doesn't matter because it was on TV. He'd have been we, more disappointed uh, and, if he would have seen that so called so, game. So we, we, <laughs> we're, looking forward, we're looking forward to watching the game, okay? We're looking forward to seeing some semblance of NFL football. NFL is king. Do you realize, Don't do this Max, on a Monday oh, listen, morning. listen, listen, listen. Do, this to do me you on a realize this, Max Kellerman? Do you realize that? That chances are the NFL Hall of Fame game last night, as meaningless as that game is to you, probably would have outrated viewership for the Olympics. Do you realize that? Oh, so, that's oh, really, really. A commentary on the Olympics. Uh, Excuse me, that's commentary <laughs> on everything. Because the fact of the matter is, when it comes to the NFL, it usually outrates everything. That's why it's king. That's why it's usurped baseball as America's national pastime. That's why we look at the NBA, which is considered like one of the top two sports worldwide, but in America, it ain't even close to being number one because it's the National Football League. We've got pastors that literally schedule their sermons around Sunday football. Let me make sure I go in a little bit early. 
earlier today. Let me make sure I get my congregation out of here by 12 noon because kickoff is 1 o'clock and I can get them out of here by 12 noon. <laughs> Shake a few hands, kiss a few babies, act like I'm a politician and not just a pastor or a minister. Oh, guess what I will do? I will be out of there by 12, 15, 12, 30. I will get home in time for kickoff and I will make the game. That's this so is true. what goes on in America. <laughs> now, Max Kellerman, being the boxing aficionado that he is, traveling the world over to give us such a pugilistic sport. I'm quite sure that somehow, some way, Max Kellerman might get his patriotism lost in the equation from time to time. But in America, okay, football is king. The Hall of Fame matters. The Hall of Fame game matters. And the fact that it didn't take place because some paint congealed at midfield or the end zone is disgraceful. The Hall, of fame, the Hall of fame matters. Period. The Hall of Fame matters clearly. Very difficult to get into the Football Hall of right. Fame. I mean, there's a wait right. list of guys who belong in there who might eventually get it, but it's a serious thing. I'm not saying anything against the Hall of Fame. I'm talking about football exhibition, period. You talk about boxing. Boxing also does not lend itself to exhibition. Sports that require... Really? No, exhibition, no. Sports that require, you know, how does a football team, how do you know who's going to win? you got to watch the line play. you got to see who is fully invested. Not this kind of halfway tackling, let's avoid injury. Let me ask you something. When you watch Hard Knocks or something in the yeah, summer, right? It's right. August, you're like, oh... I cannot wait for NFL season. Every time you see some NFL films, you're like, I can't wait for NFL season. Are you thinking about the preseason? No, no, but here's the thing. That's me in a minority because I'm suffocated by the world of sports in a way that the average Joe is not because I do this for a living. Secondly, and more importantly, you have to remember when you're alluding to that half, you know, the sort of half-hearted effort that is put forth, those are from the dudes who know they're going to play, who know they're going to be a Ross on the roster. But by and large, particularly when it comes to those last three quarters, sometimes three and a half quarters this early, you got a whole bunch of jo guys playing for a job in the NFL, and they're going all out. Now, granted, they're not the marquee major players, but the flip side is they're better than most of the cats out here aspiring to be football players, and they're in a position to possibly make the team, and they've got to show themselves. So we do want to see that to some degree in the end all of that is irrelevant the relevant part of this conversation is very clear and simple the nb the nfl is a multi-billion dollar conglomerate uh -huh. this is what you do you bring in an excess of 18 billion annually but you got your, some of your star players, because Andrew Luck was going to play yesterday, you got some of your star players that's going to play on a damn high school football field, okay, where you got a rock concert the day before, and paint jobs need to be done at midfield and in the end zone, and it congeals, which means it's hardened, all right, which means it isn't safe conditions for the players, which forced the game to be canceled. How in God's name can you allow that to happen? Just, it seems to me it's flagrantly insensitive to even put Football players representing the NFL on such a field that's why with they didn't. such conditions. That's why but, they didn't. But, but you know what? Maybe you shouldn't have had the game there okay, to begin with. But I, now I just want you on record about this because you're forcing me to defend Goodell. I can't believe this, but here I'm going to do it. The next time something happens and Goodell uh, it comes down with, with what you would might describe as a draconian ruling, right? Some kind of yeah. overbearing ruling. What do you say then? In other words, does he have is it too much power and, he's, and the NFL is too controlling and the commissioner is too controlling or not? Because here they have their hands off the wheel a bit because it is the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Something goes wrong, which has not since yet. Since when is the NFL's hands to off delegate. the wheel? By the way, which has since not. Since when? Since right now. Since Goodell wasn't game. running this show. Or by the way, this would have been handled. By the way, today's his 10th anniversary as commissioner. Well, congratulations. Congrats. I mean, congratulations. I, I, I know there's okay. a lot of hate out there for Goodell. It's and not I for have me. Been, I'm, I have, I'm, not, I'm not one of okay, those guys. I have been a frequent critic of his, but here you have to admit that if this is an NFL joint instead of a Pro Football Hall of Fame joint, I'll I'm, bet you, I'm, the, I'll bet you the field I'm is okay. I'm saying the, oh, the, pro, you know, the NFL is usually invasive enough with anything remotely related to its product. They're so protective of their product and their brand that they don't leave it to the devices of anyone else. And here they so, did. All right. Well, then, that's, well, then again, that's, that's a problem. What, that's so what we're at, saying that's is why I'm never leave the, it to the, anyone the, else's devices. Well, that's what I'm saying. And I'm saying by doing so, you're messed up, Roger Goodell, in this particular 
particular situation. I'm usually not this staunch critic of Roger Goodell. I happen to like the man personally. But in this particular equation, I think he dropped the ball, and it needs to be said, rather than being glossed over because you're labeling the Hall of Fame game a meaningless game. I think you're wrong. Okay. Well, I think I'm right. All right. <laughs> I don't well, know you go ahead and think that. Well, we didn't get to see the Hall of Fame game, right. but we did get to hear the speeches Saturday night. Congrats to everyone in Shrine. I was a little emotional. There might have been some teary eyes. I'm not going to lie. No. A Rod, also a little emotional. No. As he says his goodbye to his playing career, which will end on Friday. So the question is is the Hall of Fame next on the horizon for him? Max and Stephen A will weigh into I that question. I can't wait to talk about this one. Good. Oh, this is going to be too. good. Stay here, people.